throughout the course of the afternoon we'll keep track of that depending on the track position of James Courtney and Jamie Wincup. Remember that Jamie Wincup has won the last two championships. James Courtney is yet to win one. Can he do it this weekend? It would be a remarkable effort. He had a solid mid-season, but solid has been the key. He's performed so well across the entire year. He's had less race wins than Jamie Wincup, less pole positions, less everything, but he's been in the top ten the whole way and averaged finish position has been much higher than Jamie. Two minutes signal, two minutes signal. So as we welcome the world to this coverage of the Sydney Telstra 500, you are set for an enormous afternoon of motorsport. Let's check out the Fuso grid. The qualifying session was fantastic. Lee Holdsworth was the man at the end of the shootout. He'll start alongside Mark Winterbottom. So Holden versus Ford on the front row of the grid. Then Jamie Wincup, championship contender. Position three, second row, Michael Caruso as well. Tim Slade, a great qualifying effort. There's James Courtney, our championship leader. So he's one back and one wide of Jamie Wincup. Todd Kelly and Alex Davison also inside the top 10 for this event. Alex picked up a pole earlier this year at Darwin. Russell Ingle just couldn't translate a great qualifying effort into a one lap shootout. And the same can be said for Shane Van Gisbergen, but there's plenty of pace and plenty of experience. Look at that, Lowndes and Greg Murphy. Between them, nine Bathurst wins. Fabian Coulthard and Rick Kelly. Car 15 from position number 14. Stephen Richards and Stephen Johnson. We know that Stevie Richards is on the move out of FPR next year. Just part of the silly season. Will Davison's on the move. Chances are he'll take over the seat vacated by Stevie Richards. Tony Dalberto for Centaur Racing. There's Carl Reindler. One guy has had a bet on Carl Reindler to win this race. If Carl wins, there'll be one very happy man. You know the outcome? $100,000. Jonathan Webb had a big crash in qualifying. Garth Tander just cannot get a handle on car two. Warren Luff for Golf Western Oil Racing, Lucas Dumbrell Motorsport. There's Andrew Thompson, Bundy Red Racing Team. Andrew Jones continues to fill in for Jason Richards. And as always, Jace, we know you're watching this afternoon. Our thoughts are with you, mate. Tony Ricciardello and Jason Bright, fastest in practice. They've ripped the engine out of that, done major rework all over it. And there's Paul Dumbrell, who, by the way, since the last time we saw him, where he won his first race, claimed pole position for the first time in his career, jumped on a plane, went over to Mexico, competed in a full-blown Ironman event, and has returned for the final event of the season. Now, Matty, you might recall we were talking about how close this is going to be to a two-stop race. Effectively, it's a three-stopper. But Jason Bright, who's got to start from the back of the grid as a result of what happened to him in qualifying, has actually come back into the pit. Well, he didn't even go out. He sat in the pit lane. They fueled the car up. So they're about six or seven litres better off than everyone. So one pace car, and they're going to do this in two stops. So watch out for that trading pace car. How good is Fujitsu Racing going? Gary Rogers has two of his cars in the top four. I said, what have you told the boys? He said, go out there and have a heap of fun. He said, if they're having fun, they'll race well. He's tipping Michael Caruso to be leading by the first corner. Now, that'll be interesting. Oh, yeah. It's going to be aggressive. It'll be a lot of fun down there to turn one as they go charging down that long Australia drive. Now, remember, if you need to leave us throughout the course of the next 74 laps. A, you'd be mad to do it. B, if you have to do it, take your uh, Big Pond Telstra Next G Mobile and you will catch all our coverage on your phone there. Thanks to Big Pond Sport. And also, by the way, I mentioned Jason Richards earlier before recovering after an operation to remove a tumour in his stomach. And if you'd like to leave a message of support for Jace, just go to the V8 Supercars website. There's a link there. So go to v8supercars.com.au. Following on from uh, Mark Larkham's remarks there before, three litres or more per lap represents three stops. And uh, if you can get it down to 2.9 litres or better, you'll get away with those couple of stops. Now, one significant change this year over 2009 is that the cars, if we go on board here with Greg Murphy, are using the 75 litre fuel tank, not the 120 litre fuel tank that they had here this time last year being massively distracted in the commentary box here, by the way. Not for Fabian the first time. Coulthard uh, on board with him in the Bundy red cars have been subjected to a significant amount of repair work again after practice yesterday. So this has changed the strategy game. And uh, the weather is a factor as well. The, the forecast remains valid through the afternoon. There could be periods of up to 30 minutes of showers. 
relatively low cloud low visibility but at the moment where the wind's coming from which sort of looks as though it's the north northeasterly direction doesn't look too bad here with uh, Garth Tander, Toll Holden Racing Team, and it's been a difficult run for Garth. He's down in 22nd on the grid and uh, couldn't find any happiness in the setup of that car. They had some brake trauma with that car in the early part of practice yesterday. Gives you an idea of exactly where this circuit is situated in the middle of Sydney Olympic Park precinct. That's the train station just off to the right hand side. On the bottom of the screen there is the pavilion and the dome, which uh, over the Royal Easter Show you go in and get your show bags. That's our paddock. That's where all the cars are. That's where you've seen our host studio and of course running right down the middle there is merchandise alley ANZ stadium off to the top so they go around some of the most iconic venues in Australian sporting history and that's what will be made this weekend either way we'll have a first time championship winner or a three time championship winner downhill start here guys so you have to keep a real eye on the cars creeping down Australia Avenue a, uh, a very difficult place to get the car off the line Big fall away too, isn't it? You can see it there, the back of the grid. Flag, green flag. On a different plane to the start of the grid. It's Lee Holdsworth versus Mark Winterbottom. Five, four, three, two, one, and away they will go for the Sydney Telstra 500. Mark Winterbottom, talk about aggression. He's squeezing Holdsworth over down to turn one. Russell Ingle, already aggressive too. They're four wide. This will not work. Four will not work into turn one. Somehow they've made it stick. Garth Tander looked as though he benefited too. But somebody's into the wall. It had to happen. It's Tony Delberto. Car three, Tony Delberto. He can't back it back. So he's, he's in first gear. He's got the wheels lit up and he's trying to get reversed then to try to get it back off those tyres. So a very good start, Lee Holdsworth. Mark Winterbottom, Jamie Winkup. Big wide moment there out of turn seven for Jamie Winkup. And Courtney had it massively crossed up as well, a couple of cars behind. Ingalls car sliding through eight. What a shot. Isn't that a great shot? This is the roller coaster down towards turn nine. Massive undulation in the road. So Holdsworth. <laughs> Lee Holdsworth has held off this challenge from Mark Winterbottom. Win Cup already crawling over the back of Winterbottom. Remember, Mark Winterbottom is in the championship picture too. It's a little margin back to Courtney. Jack Daniels cars came in on the inside of that turn there, so first time around, it's Lee Holdsworth. Will Davison having a look at Rick Kelly. That's for position 14 and 15. Jason Barguana also going on the outside line. Holdsworth's got pace. He's pulled away from Frost here. 0.8 of a second the difference. This car looks good. Very well balanced. In fact, of the first two or three cars, Mark Winterbottom looks like the guy who's a little bit underdone. Wing Cup's got a lot of pressure on him. This is turn eight. Have a look how far the, the road drops away out to the outside wall. And we'll see some drama there through this race because we saw plenty there last year. So goes in search of clean air. Let's see a replay off the side. It's a good start by Winterbottom, but just watch the way right down the front that Lee Holdsworth holds his line, refuses to yield. And how's Ingle down the inside of Todd Kelly to be four abreast in the turn one? Him. How that all happened, you'd never know. In the bottom of screen is how Rick Kelly and Tony Dalberto come together to see Dalberto in the tyres. Murphy's quick at the moment as well. He's got the fastest lap of the race in ninth position, 130.9. Guys, Stephen Richards, one lap and back in the garage. Bent steering from that incident at the start. Oh, look at this, Wind Cup. Oh, 
Got it done. Dive. Great it done. dive. He did it last year. Same spot. That is a very, very good pass. Very authoritative early in the race with heavy fuel. Still waiting for tyres to fully normalise. And he took an opportunity. It was right at the braking limit. Winterbottom was locked up trying to defend and he got it done. Well, you guys were talking about it at the start of the show. Risk versus reward. An ultimate commitment is needed. What about the risk involved in that move oh. for Jamie Winkup? Third lap into this race, championship on the line, and he takes a big dive on the inside of Mark Winterbottom. And, Matty, that's exactly why Jamie is a championship winner. He's not interested in coming second. He's all or nothing, mate, and you've got to reward guys like that. Well, he knows Larko, too. The best way to win a championship is to just keep winning races. Here it is again. So they're both absolutely maxed out. Look at Winterbottom, who had to be held up a little high and wide to do it. Locked the front left. He's come from a long way out. It's a very, very impressive move. And uh, to actually get it stopped and turned and scoot out the other side. And now with the fastest lap of the race. So he's now hunting Lee Holdsworth. This is a very impressive display from Wincup. 130.2. He was eight tenths quicker on the last lap than Lee Holdsworth. That's a big margin. And James Courtney is in sixth position. So Holdsworth from Wincup. Winterbottom, Caruso, Tim Slade, James Courtney, Russell Lingle, Todd Kelly, Greg Murphy and Alex Davison are your top ten. Let's not forget that Jamie Wincup won both races on the streets of Hamilton in New Zealand. Also won the race on the Sunday in the streets of Surface Paradise and he's just hounding Lee Holtzworth. He's all over it. He's got a pile of pace in that car at the moment, Jamie Wincup. Watch this on board. And he'll look down the inside of nine. It'd be a brave move if he got away with it there. He looked. It's enough to just unsettle the race leader who will be seeing hints of the colour in his rearview mirror. He fought twice, didn't he? I reckon he had a second think about having a dive down there in turn nine and then thought better of it. He did, for sure, Matt. Clearly knows he's got pace over Holdsworth. It's probably just a matter of time. And I like that onboard shot too of wing cut that we just saw. He just looked really controlled. Now, now Winterbottom has gathered it all up and recovered a bit here. Fastest lap of the race, position three. On board here with Jamie. He's got a little bit better brake performance at the moment into turn one. Remember, it was at the end of this next straight where he got Mark Winterbottom two laps back. It's too far back this time. All good champions look as though they've got more time than anybody else. Part of the reason why he's able to do it is its ride across that bump that Mark's spoken about into turn two. The ride control of the Vodafone car is very, very good there. Makes the car more stable under brakes than a lot of those he's been racing. And just picture this because when you are in this battle for the championship, look how close he is. You can't see Crumpo. When you're right behind the car in front on a street circuit, you don't know where the wall is because you're being... The guy is the car in front. You're being led along. So if Holdsworth makes a mistake, you make a mistake with him. He's just showing the nose again in the braking area. He's got enough pace. The question is, will he get the run at the right time? He either needs a very good exit from turn 13, the last turn or perhaps into turn two again, but he's got to be in the right spot. Critical graphic there for Mark Winterbottom. He's responded to that move by posting the fastest lap time. That ensures that he's going to go with Winkup. See, Lee's very strong off the final corner, which basically gives him great the driving, critical... Great, great driving. Mark Dutton gives him the critical three or four car lengths, covers him at the other end down here. So just watch this, this is the spot. So off turn one, the exit drive, what Pompo was talking about there, was the exit drive of the Fujitsu car with Lee Holdsworth at the helm is very good off the corner. The, the uh, straight line traction, the way the car comes off the corner, is better than Wing Cups at the moment, so he gets a little gap. So Lee Holdsworth has held his own from the start of this race. But Carl Reindler, this car 21, and this that will car's be a safety stranded. car. This will be a safety car, and it has been called by the race director. So Tim Schenken's actually called it now. This is at the last corner. Oh, but he's got a wheel off it. Oh, it's in the fence too. So the front left was already gone, and he's now about three feet higher than he should be. 
Andrew Jones is also in the pit lane somewhere. So uh, you can see that the uh, SC boards and the yellow flags will be out. And look at the damage on that car. Yeah, thing just turned right into the wall. Yeah, so the front left was already gone at that stage by the time no, it's speared right, Now there'll, there'll be a, a flurry of activity potentially it's here as well for fuel. Bad news for the guy who had uh, a bet on Carl Wright. Like that hundred's over. That hundred's <laughs> gone. <laughs> yeah. Now, I reckon some of them will actually take the risk of queuing cars here. We'll see what happens. Depends on who you are and where you are in the field. So the leaders are not buying into that one. But look at the number of wheels that are lined up and people have laid up in the pit lane ready. So... There you go. That's on board with the Petter safety car. It has been deployed. Okay. So a few of them are now taking the opportunity to come in. Uh, that's Russell Eagles in. Murphy and the rest of the world, basically. It's, it's more yeah. a case of who's still out. So, Stephen Johnson. Yes. Paul Dumbrell. Yes. Warren Luck. Clear. 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 This is all a bit, this is all a bit messy here. Team Vodafone, Craig Lowndes comes in. Looks like Will Davison in so for HRT. In the case of people like uh, England, it means they're taking the stress out of the... Uh, oh, oh. Oh. oh, goodness, how awkward was that? Two team cars effectively from Walkinshaw Racing, and uh, that'll be an unsafe release. Sure. It just had that messy feel about it. I mean, the truck came out to go and collect... Some clean air when you can get it, mate. Just some clean air when you get it. Collect car 21 as all those guys were diving into the pit lane. I, I don't think anybody was really clear on what was going on there. And, I think that's transferred all the way down to what you just saw with Will Davison trying to get out in a hurry. So this will determine exactly what happened. So there's the first impact on the Zinger replay of Carl Reinler's car. And by the time he gets around to the front straight, the front left is already gone. Look at it, it's wobbling out of control and then it just fires him off into the fence. Well, he should have come straight into the pit, Matt. He, he crashed at the previous corner and he should have come straight into the pit. So here we go, here's the... HRT and Bundy incident. So, yeah, so this is Will, Will Davison, Davison coming out, and that's Fabian Cawthorn. Bang! Wheel to wheel. They've hit very hard. That'll be a penalty for, for Will. Here we go. This is from behind. Remember that uh, Will can't see out of the car, so it's the car controller who has that responsibility. We just, we just called uh, race control. So what lap were we on? And they said, we don't know. <laughs> been counting but uh, just another variable into the mix we come to street circuits and we talk about you know manhole covers and painted lines and possibly weather throw another one into the mix computers that don't work the bottom line is that we'll be restarting this race in a matter of seconds and it's Holdsworth versus Wincup and check out Jamie Wincup. Yeah, watch him because he's going to try and make the opportunity work for him here. He's, he's shadowed him for the restart. He stayed right under him and he's got car pace. So watch him on cold tyres. He's looking at one. He was waiting to pounce before the safety car came out. He's about the only guy that stayed glued to the bloke in front of him. Everybody else has let a couple of car lengths get into the game here. Let's have a look as they go past. Holdsworth from Wincup, from Winterbottom. Watching. Look at this. Great, great transition through. Fiesas. Great power down. Holdsworth's going to have to have his elbows high in a couple of spots here. Michael Caruso's in fourth. Look at these restarts is where you can pounce. Turn eight would be very hard. Lee covers shallow line. That'll make Wing Cup fast on the exit if he gets it. Gets the throttle up nicely. He might think about getting down the inside at nine. But it's so unstable down there under brakes. Oh, he's so committed. He has to go through with it. But Holdsworth has the right line for the next turn. So, so he had the right idea. Because Lee covered going into eight, it made him slow. Look at this, he's up the inside again. This time he'll make it stick. Well, Jamie Wincup hits the lead of the motor race. And it's actually fumbled Lee to the extent that he's now vulnerable to Winterbottom. Last corner. Mate, excellent driving. Eyes forward, eyes forward. 
That was excellent driving. Very, very aggressive. Great overtaking manoeuvre. It started when Holdsworth had to go shallow into eight. That made his corner exit speed slightly slower. That gave Jamie the run into nine. It was a maximum attack under brakes in there. He showed his nose, that unsettled the rhythm, and then he gets him up the inside of the next corner. Exactly. And he's got great pace at the moment, Win Cup. And that's all about putting pressure on the guy in front of you. So he put enough pressure on Lee Holdsworth to announce that he was going to have a crack anyway. It didn't work the first time, but that unsettled both Lee's rhythm and line. And not only that, Matty, this is more than a motor race now. I reckon this is a head game because what James is doing by default is putting pressure on James Courtney. Look where he is now, in the pack, in where all the corruption happens. And look at James, he's in clear air. And he took risk to get that reward. That's a champion. Black flag, pit lane drive through penalty for Will Davison for the unsafe release that uh, we observed with all that stuff in the lane when they all took that first stop. So that move on Fabian. Oh, look at this, Tim Slade up the inside now with Michael Caruso fish tailing. Is there space? Oh, Courtney gets two spots out of it, but he actually climbs up over the Caruso car. Is there damage to the Jim Beam car? He's checking the steering. This is not what he needs at the moment. Todd Kelly's in it as well. Courtney's going to have to fight his way out of this hole that he put himself in when Tim Slade went for a move that turned out wrong. So wind comes streets ahead. Okay, mate. I can't do it. I'm just making sure everything feels all right. Wind comes down in turn one. Then Holtzworth, then Caruso. Tim Slade pulls off to the left-hand side and slides it into turn one the wrong way. That was bad, wasn't it? You could see it coming from a long way out. Dirty side of the road. Tim couldn't stop it down there. He's managed to get away with it without damage, but he's dropped a monster bunch of spots. Alex Davison up on the inside here of Garth Panda. Job done. A little update on that timing glitch, because it's been quite unusual that we've got this problem at the moment. It's been caused as a result of Carl Reinley hitting the wall down there. It's actually fractured one of the data cables, so they're working on it at the moment. This is a wild start, boys. But what about the pace? from Winkup. So look at this. That's Caruso on the outside. Slade now on the outside. Does the crisscross and then the contact. Left front to right rear. And the next little bit of straight, he does a really good job, Courtney, to just check whether the steering is damaged. So there's the contact. And he would have got a fair bit of feedback through the palms of his hands there. So that's why he'd be worried. Absolutely. So down the next straight, he does the little wiggle and makes sure he can still steer the car. So the order is Wing Cup. Leading from Lee Holdsworth, then Mark Winterbottom, Michael Caruso, and now we find James Courtney. So that's how they stand. Wing Cup goes through first. Courtney is now in fifth. So our championship leader has four spots to make up. He's got Michael Caruso in his sights. So this will run you through. Wing Cup, Holdsworth, Winterbottom, Michael Caruso, James Courtney, Todd Kelly, Alex Davison, Garth Tander, Rick Kelly, Shane Van Gisberg and Russell Ingle and Jason Bright. It's way early to get too carried away, but the difference between first and fifth in this race is worth 39 points. That's the difference, that's the gain. Here's Courtney on the charge now. Is there some steering damage? The mirror's folded back on the driver's side. He's involved in that vigorous brawl. He's looking to try and unlock himself from Caruso. But it's worth doing because it's worth another nine points if he can do it. Caruso shaped to block then, halfway down the straight, moved it over a little bit and covered his line in a spot that he was vulnerable a couple of laps ago to Tim Slade. So. Courtney's pace looks good. Caruso looks absolutely under pressure. Courtney's paying the price for not being far enough up the front in qualifying. Absolutely. He's got car pace, he's had car pace in the recent past, but when you don't have track position, you spend a big chunk of the motor race just trying to resolve where you might naturally drop in in speed terms. So if James can clear another spot here, it gets him another nine points. It just eases a bit of the pressure that's being brought about by having Win Cup lead the race. They came into the race with a 53-point swing in favour of Courtney. And at the moment, 
Wing Cup's on target to take 39 of those away from James. Which sets up a monster race for tomorrow. But there's a long way to go in this one. You're spot on because right now the championship pitcher reads that James Courtney only has a 14 point lead over Jamie Wing Cup. Picked up the throttle very early at turn eight then James, but Actually, it actually runs out of breath on the exit of the corner. He had to find the gear early, so he lost a little bit of the exit advantage. Oh, he's right on the braking limit here into nine. He barely pulled it up then, and Michael's just sneaking across and just narrowing up the line. The other thing here, they've asked him to go headlights on is you'll start to see a rise in water and brake temperatures and it's already a place that works brakes pretty hard. So he's swallowing a lot of hot air from Michael's car at the moment. What we've seen so far is Wing Cup has made a couple of critical passing manoeuvres. A great pass on Winterbottom, a great pass on Holdsworth. Now it's time Courtney has got to respond also. He's got to get by Caruso. You've got to have a dive. He's got to get out into the clear air or he'll be stuck there lap after lap after lap. So remember, Jamie Wincup is our race leader. We had an off in qualifying, triggered a red flag, so had to start from the rear of the grid. He was the fastest car in practice, so they're happy with the pace of that car, and now he's trying to work his way through the field. And we believe using, oh, this is uh, oh. door missing off the Tony Delberto car, tangling up with Warren Luff there. That was messy, to say the least. Now, uh, Jason Bright, by our dead reckoning, is the first car in the field that's actually started from the pit lane and has taken the stop and he's the first in the queue if you like he's the guy that those that have not stopped at the front of the field are racing when they make their first stop so this is warren luff in the gulf western oils entry down at uh, turns two three four that was uh, that was pretty safety wicked. car safety cars being deployed here because of where warren is well he would have known wouldn't have known what had happened there because he just got a touch up from behind and all of a sudden he was face first into the fence. So there's Michael Caruso. And now this will have car the, activated. the effect of uh, condensing the field, which would be good news for Jason Bright. Safety car just confirming the present leader is car one. Car one is down by. Tim Schenken just sending a message down to the safety car. And if you're on a two stop strategy now, that is burning 2.9 litres of fuel per lap or less, which would be pretty miraculous. You can't really stop now. Safety cars, scramble, safety cars, because you won't be able to fuel to manage your fuel to get to the end on the on those two stops. It'll blow. It'll blow your theory. So Caruso's backed off, but he, he needs to be pressing on still because you've got to be right up there. This is effective uh, positions as Wing Cup comes in to take this stop. So again, Neil, what well, Neil was saying before. Mate, we're going to drive around the DRM boys, going to drive around those guys, so it's just going to be a quick stop here. We're going to uh, rears only and pull. OK, so your race leaders are in. Wind Cup. Busy exit, yeah. Busy exit. Three times are going on. Winter Bottom. Filter clutch, filter clutch. Going to be clear out, going to be clear, going to be... Now, Courtney and Caruso <laughs> continued. So different strategies here. The Vodafone... First gear for me. Good. So Caruso's the leader of the race. From Courtney, who stayed out, they've pitted Wind Cup, as you just saw. And the first car in the field at this stage that has actually stopped and grabbed fuel is either Ingle or Bright, and I'll verify that for you as the field cleanses. Yeah, I think you'll find actually, it's Ingle. It's Ingle, yeah. I've given the false impression that there was some incorrect information in relation to Bright. He did start from the pit lane, but they haven't actually stopped him within the race itself yet. So the car that's best placed, having made a stop, is Russell Ingle. But remember that those in front, I'm suggesting that Caruso and Courtney are actually trying to play a two-stop game here. Yep. So it's a really, and this is what we alluded to at the front of the race, that it's a really interesting scenario. It depends on each driver, their treatment of the throttle, their fuel economy, their race pace. And the, and the real Go, Robert, drama of this is Wing Cup is in 17th as we are right now. 
He's led the race. He's been out of harm's way, now but in. now he's right back in that. And their fuel burn, I heard them on the radio, they think they're burning too much fuel, so they went, well, let's just do it now and pay the price. Bad restart from Caruso. Caruso got very sideways, coming onto the straight. James Courtney's right there. Courtney is doing to Caruso what Wing Cup did to Holdsworth, and Caruso's lost it. Courtney gets the race lead. Well done, James Courtney. Very good restart. Now, that effectively releases James. Yes, and he can just get into his own rhythm, get his elbows up now, can even afford to take a bit of pace out of the lap speed of the car when things settle down. This could be a bit mean. Ooh. Wouldn't want to be Craig Lowndes now. I don't want to be out there. Need your head down, that's OK. So they really pumped him up at the restart. You heard the guys yelling out, go, Robbo, go. That's Michael Caruso's nickname. So he was full of energy and full of beans going down to turn one. The problem was he was carrying way too much steam. Caruso, uh, Courtney put the pressure on him. Caruso made the mistake. And James Courtney has been released at the front of the field. That was Caruso saying the tyres are cold and hopeless. But you've got to drive to those conditions, Combo. You've, got, you've only got X amount of grip. You've got to drive it to stay on the black stuff. And, and uh, Michael, bad restart and then a pretty simple mistake down at turn one. Oh, oh it's fine there. That's gone. Stephen Johnson, it looked like he may have got the wall then. And he just had Greg Murphy go past him as well. So this is the replay of Courtney. And there goes Caruso. And if you look carefully at that replay again, the rot sets in on the bump. And he's got the left-hand side of the car parked perfectly on the white line. So the painted white line doesn't have near the grip. There's the shot, the replay shot of Stevie Johnson. Yep. And yes, he did tag the tyres, but thankfully it was the tyres and not the concrete, so he got away oh, with it. And there's the Wink up. That's exactly oh. what you're talking about, Scafi. That's what you get caught up in when you're mid-pack. Watch the replay. Look where the left side of the car is. It's right on top of the white line. It isn't as grippy as the asphalt, and that's partially what's helped bring Michael Undone down there. Absolutely. In that circumstance, the centre of the road with the highest grip level, it's resurfaced in the median strip area. He needed to park the car on the black median strip where the highest grip was. It was on the white line, as Neil pointed out, and the left-hand front wheel locked. So Stephen got away with that. All he's done is pluck the left rear light assembly out of it and uh, live to fight another day, another metre down the road, and it's concrete. So that was a pretty nice one. And how lucky was Winkup not to be part of all that? 1.30.8 in that last lap. Sorry, 30.08 last lap for James Courtney. Nearly a second up now on Alex Davison. And uh, Will Davison climbing back through the field, having served a pit lane drive through penalty for the unsafe release. Back into the traffic. And uh, Fabian Coulthard being the victim there in the Bundy red car. Puts Will Davison up to 12th spot. There's Jamie Wincup. Smack bang in the middle of trouble central. He's got Stevie Johnson in front of him. He's got Mark Winterbottom behind him. And in terms of the championship, well, James Courtney... Driving, mate. Excellent driving. He is safe to get through as quick as he can safely. 13 seconds further up the road. The other point about this is that just before the stops, Lee Holdsworth was in front of Mark Winterbottom in second position. Now, out of all the stops, you can see Winterbottom behind Wing Cup. Then there's Todd Kelly, and then the car with the lights on is Lee Holdsworth. So he's actually dumped a couple of spots in all that pit drama. Wing Cup's going to spend a month of Sundays in this queue. Yeah. And, you know, when he gets Stephen Johnson, he then has to deal with Dean Fiore. And, I mean, there's just so many cars. Even if you've got a car that's superior in speed, and we saw at the beginning of the race, the car behaviour was beautiful. He's driving it immaculately, but he's got so much... Look at it, it's just a string of traffic in front. No matter how much they encourage him, that's going to have an impact on his total time. And that list of risks that you guys have been talking about has now got longer for him all of a sudden. When you're out in front, the risks are much less. Now he has to make risky moves to get past all of these guys because track position is everything. Courtney's Jamie teammate. Winker. That's Courtney's teammate there who was blocking. So, well, you know that uh, there's going to be no favours there. So now he's cleared him. That's one down. One down, 12 to go. Winterbottom's just in behind these guys as well in car five. He's currently sitting 16th. That was a good pass, guys. He come onto the straight very well. A really good dive. They're the sorts of things we've seen him all weekend so far. He's been very good.
black flag pit lane drive through penalty for Tony Delberto. That will be for the incident with Warren Love for sure up into turn two, yeah. which was pretty heavy contact. And we're going to see James Courtney in and around about three laps on our estimate. So the difference time-wise between this man, Jamie Wincup, three times, he's twice he's won the championship, he's going for three straight to become possibly just the third man in history to win three straight. Ian Gagan did it from 66 to 69, and Scafi, you did the treble 2000, 2001, and 02. But in terms of time, not to mention just position, there is 12 seconds between Jamie Wincup and James Courtney. And Scafi, I mean, you've been there, mate. Jamie's won two championships. Do you think that allows him to just take that little extra risk? I mean, he's, he's done it. What do you think? Yeah, I think so, Like I think the way he's driving, you could not fault his drive today so far. It's just been very authoritative. He's stamped some some real, you know, wing cup presence on this race. A couple of those passes have just been fantastic. That pass on Mark Winterbottom for the lead was just an you know, amazing pass. And, you, you know, your, your point's very valid because when you know how to win a championship, you don't come into this race with this... With, with a cluttered feel about it. You've got a very simple objective of going and winning the race. And that's exactly what it is. With the points so tight, he knows that he has to stay in front of James Courtney. It just so happens that Jamie Wincup is delivering a Jamie Wincup performance. Lots of speed, some great moves, and some risky passes that he's pulling off. And by virtue of the way they fueled Jamie, where he's dropped back in the pack, some of all this is going to play back to him because he's 12 seconds off the lead of the car race at the moment. James Courtney leads it, due in for fuel shortly, to put the fuel back in it, the four wheels and tyres, and transit the racetrack, the pit lane, and get back on and get back up to speed. The total loss is about 48 seconds. So remember, he's only got 12 seconds up his sleeve from Wind Cup. He's going to drop 48, so they'll change positions in this sequence. It's a great shot of exactly where we are coming down to turn 10. They do a little left-hand, right-hand combination along Murray Rose Avenue. There's the train station on the right-hand side of them, the dome and the pavilion on the left. They circle around this wonderful precinct, and it's up and down, it's roller coaster, it's tight, it's got different camber on the roads, there's paint lines everywhere, and a gazillion concrete barriers to wipe out. Larko? Oh, Neil, you were exactly right earlier, your comments about Jason Bright on their possible two-stop strategy. This is working to them. Um, you're on the money there. Now, let's not forget how fast Jason's car was uh, in practice yesterday. Very quick. He's still very quick. The little issue they've got, though, they did that engine change, and they think there might be a little airlock in the engine where they've put the water in the engine, and that's created a temperature issue. It's not over the top yet, but you have to watch it very carefully. Very fast lap speed also from Wind Cup 129.6 to be the fastest on the racetrack at the moment. I believe that would be a, a new lap record. Yeah. So uh, we knew that Bright had pace based on what happened yesterday, but remember his qualifying all went sour when he clobbered heavily the curbing at turn seven when he got in there a bit hot in the early part of qualifying, plucked an oil line off it. They changed an engine to be on the safe side. He's climbed up through the field now. He's sixth. Started in from Pippo. Well, the deal was they knew that the car had pace, Crompo, so why not just get him out of the mix of everybody else and let him try and run his own race? This is uh, not good, this little pack. There's, there's, <laughs> there's going to be. You see something go. brewing, do yeah, you? <laughs> Here's Murphy down the inside of Fabian Coulthard at turn two. Very, very good pass. And. Cup on Davison. Cup on Davison. It takes Jamie to 12th in the field and uh, great pace considering traffic around him to punch out effectively a mid 29. But he's 11 and a half seconds off the lead. This is Tander. Scapey, that was very funny what you just said. That's your years of motor racing. When you can look at a gaggle of cars and say, this is not good. For the people at home, you know when you walk into the pub and you know this is not good? It's exactly that. Well done, mate. Shane Van Gisbergen's come into the lane from up near the top of the field, so uh, he's getting service. Oh, there you go. Speaking of getting service. That was from the same little family of cars, so that won't be a nice garage to bowl back into later on this afternoon. 
Shane Van Gisbergen rejoins the race. Just trying to work out what type of pubs Larko hangs out in. <laughs> so, yet again, an HRT car whacks into the Bundy car. It's Garth Tander into the back corner of Andrew Thompson. So already Will Davison has collected Fabian Coulthard coming out of pit lane. And the other two sister cars have come in contact out at turn one. Honestly, the accountant there must just have a box of Panama on the bottom oh. the drawer at the moment. They're yeah. just writing checks. OK, here's James Courtney. Lights are on. He leads the race. He will have to pit and pit soon. He just did the fastest lap of his race, a 29.79 on the last lap. Lowndes comes in, and this will mean that with Davison also in, that Wing Cup moves up to eighth spot. So there's only seven Three spots, but done. still 12 Just seconds in go, between go, Courtney go, and Wing Cup. It's been good fuel economy from Courtney. This is Lowndes. They're going to put rotor tyres on Courtney's car, and they're going to make Three a rear done. roll centre adjustment. Just waiting on the front I reckon that was a little bit slow. He had to have to the flames Good coming out there. He had to have two cracks at the rear left then. There's James, race leader. Five half seconds, five and a half seconds in front of his old teammate, Russell Engel. And the margin back to Win Cup is 12.7 seconds, and Win Cup is seventh at the moment. And we're expecting Courtney in. And with this clean air and that little gaggle of cars, so the clean air for James, the gaggle that uh, Jamie has been in, over the last five or six laps, James has grabbed another two and a half seconds in terms of advantage time. OK, he's and, come in. And a pit lane drive through penalty for Garth Tander. Here's James in for Garth's roll in the thing down the bottom with Fabian. And that thing down the turn one. Andrew Thompson. Uh, sorry, Andrew Thompson. So they're going to bring him in now. So this is important. So where does this put him? James Courtney. Okay, when it drops, go, mate. When it drops. Now, relative to Jamie Wincup. Go, 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 go. Okay, great work. Good job. There's Garth serving the drive-through penalty. Michael Caruso, four tyres. So in the meantime, uh, Wincup's gone. He's disappeared down the road. Clear under the track now, clear under the track. So actually, just watch for uh, Tony's car. Watch for Tony. Cover your line, cover your line. It doesn't look as though they're going to climb all over him, but the enormous amount of pace that oh. the cars behind are carrying as Tanda makes a move straight away down at one. So Courtney's just lost another spot in all of that. I don't think he was ready for that. And it's back on in terms of championship advantage. Back to Jamie Wincup. Wait till the field cleanses, then we'll be able to exactly tell you what the difference is. But Russell Ingle is the race leader as Michael Caruso rejoins. So Ingle leads now from Jason Bright, Greg Murphy, Fabian Coulthard, then Jamie Wincup. You have to go down to 20th position yep. to find James Courtney. We're going to show you where Jamie is coming on to the start and finish straight. It's Jason Bright, Greg Murphy in the foreground. And you'll get an indication of where James is. There's Wincup. And it's going to be a fair old wait. That's Stephen Johnson in the Jim Beam car. So it's going to be at least the length of the straight. And that was a glimpse of Courtney in the background there. So remember, I was talking about a 12-second margin in favour of Courtney before the stop. And we know that it's 48 seconds if you're going well. And look at this. This is James now arriving. So it's a big chunk of the racetrack. It's half the racetrack. He didn't need to let Tanda buy then because he needs clear air. He needs to be able to go and make his own car speed, do the very best laps. So remember, it was a 12-second advantage for James Courtney going in. He comes out 43 seconds in deficit and a hell of a lot of track space as well. 
So Russell Ingle leads the race. Brighton Murphy step out. There's three different basic strategies on here. There's one bloke who started from the pit lane, Jason Bright. There's a little bunch that stopped on about lap five. And then there's those that stopped on about lap uh, 16, 16, 17, depending on who you are. And those that went right to the very end. So there's actually sort of four, if you like, although Jason Bright's a bit of an island in terms of this description. He's out on his own. But when you look at the numbers at the moment, the strategy that's working best in what's become a complex race, particularly with the timing issue that we had, it's those that stopped in the first little window, lap five, who are actually well positioned at the moment. This is James Courtney, and uh, where is he? 16th is the answer to that question. Still behind Garth Tander. So Ingle's the race leader. He's one of those drivers who you mentioned came in on lap five. Remember, he started from inside the top ten. Win Cup is second. The way Jamie's going on this lap, there's your race leader. Keep pushing, keep pushing. Quickest car out there at the moment, mate. Keep it in the 29. Well, the way Jamie Jamie's Wind Cup is going, he's on track for the fastest lap of the race, and he's just done so. So he's crossed the control line at 129.54, oh. and there's a mistake for Ingle. Turn one. He got just away got it. away with it, but that will close the deficit in between him and Wind Cup. That was a big moment then for Russell Engel. He was trying to stay yeah. in the 29s. And they're going to bring him in now to try and recover from it. Now, he stopped last on lap five. So he took the opportunity when Carl Reidler went into the wall to come in and grab fuel. That little mistake cost Russell Engel almost two seconds relative to the man behind him. It's a good save. So while he's trying to save all this, Wing Cup's coming charging down Australia Avenue to turn one. It goes from having an eight second deficit to six and a half. Good save, Russell Engel. That car, very easy to have a spin there. Locked the rear wheels, ran wide, but got away with it. There's Wing Cup. We've seen those red boxes in those previous laps. And there's Russell Engel. That's your gap. Why would you bother putting a mirror on? on the front? <laughs> well, look at it. First bloke's lost his. That's about the third that Team Vodafone's been through. That's probably been kind. You actually have to in the rules, so you, you don't have a choice, but the, the left mirror is optional. Um, although that's not the one at the moment that seems to have been punished quite as much this weekend. Mark Winterbottom needs special mention here because he's in third position and he's got both his mirrors. <laughs> you get a special award for that, do you, Matt? So Russell Ingalls coming in to pit lane. That means Jamie Winkup is our race leader. So this is all working out well for the Super Chief Auto team. He was stoked to be in the top 10. We made, made it uh, pretty clear that that top 10 shootout lap was potentially well, just a shocker, really. He ended up in ninth spot, but we know what Very happens when this man goes racing. Should pull that off. Should pull that off. Well done. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. See, people do listen to you, mate. And the race control had asked V8 supercar officials to look at that. So it was a good decision to pluck it off because they may have actually brought him in to make sure it was removed. Winterbottom's done the fastest split to the first timing intermediate down at turn three. So he's 4.2 seconds behind Jamie Wincup at the moment. Wincup 29.5 on the last lap. Winterbottom a 30 even, 1 minute 30.0. Paul Dumbrell's moved up into third place. They started Dumbrell from the pit lane, and they also actually, they brought him in early. Oh, hasn't he had them. some drama in that area of the racetrack over the weekend? He's crashed twice there and almost went in frontwards that time. Now, here's an interesting thing. Dumbrell started from the lane, and they also brought him in on lap five. So he's also one that's just got off my radar, and he's a bit out of step with others. We need to keep an eye on him. So Winterbottom does the fastest lap of the race, a 129.49. Just five one hundredths of a second faster than Wing Cup's fastest lap of the race. So there you go. So Wing Cup from Winterbottom, Dumbrell, Todd Kelly, Lee Holdsworth. That's your top five. Mark's been uh, spending a bit of time at home at Doonside with his mum, Mark Winterbottom that is. James Courtney from Penrith. He's gone out there as well. They love coming home, these guys, and it 
would mean an enormous amount for Mark Winterbottom to get a race win on these streets around Sydney Olympic Park. When you have a close look at the way he drives the car, Matt, he's really flowing it very nicely. When you can keep your mid-corner speed up and you come onto those straights with four or five kilometres an hour, better mid-corner speed, you don't have to accelerate it so hard on the exit. Looks after the tyre, looks very, very good. Paul Dumbrell there in third position. As Neil mentioned, he's one to watch, although he will have to pit again. Same two for Jason Barguana. Jonathan Webb had a big crash in qualifying. Tim Slade's really been mixing it up since the word go. And they're all inside the top ten right now. The Wing Cup is our race leader. We go down to tenth to find James Courtney. So still a little bit more to play out in this top ten. For this battle pack that you're looking at, some of these guys will have to still come in. So if you're keeping a scorecard on Courtney versus Winkup, or Winkup versus Courtney, <laughs> just count a couple of more spots inside the top ten for James Courtney, effectively. They've all got their mirrors back, those three there. Special awards, special mention. This has been pretty lively. Barguana, Webb and Slade. Jonathan Webb, the reigning Fujitsu champion. Or was the Fujitsu champion when he came into the main game. And he's uh, going to set a bit of a record by finishing higher up the championship list than any other graduate from the Fujitsu series to have won the championship. Oh, Dean Fiore. And can he get it out of there is the question. So that was Wing Cup going past, avoiding the trouble. Look at him. Fiori's burning it up and going nowhere. So safety car will be on standby. That's a turn nine. So just have a look deep in the background there in the Bingley car. Just lock the brakes. He'll lock the brakes. No, he didn't lock the brakes. That's the drama. <laughs> I thought he... Our boards and flags. Safety He's going car in front of The incident is at uh, turn Here's Courtney. 10, turn 10. At Turn 12, right against the gutter. Oh, he got out on the drain too. Is that stop for Dumbrell that we were talking about before? Yeah, Tom Kelly, Lee Holdsworth, Jonathan Webb. Oh, going to be a little bit dizzy, but it looks like it. So four cars in pit lane. The top ten now starting to take a more realistic shape with the field starting to be cleansed. Garth Tander also coming in. It's a real cat and mouse, this one, because the, the, the lap five stoppers, the Three best position four tires, four fuel, is Russell Engel. You've got this HRD car coming, HRD car coming as well. The lap 16 stoppers, the best position is Wind Cup. And those that ran to the end of their fuel load, the best position is Courtney. But every time I finish a calculation and talk to our two engineers and hear about it, safety cars and something else happens, so we go back to the abacus to try and unravel it. <laughs> but it, it's... Um, this is going to be a fascinating one. It's a real, it's a real snakes and ladders. This one. If you're in the wrong spot at the wrong time, you could really burn badly, or you could end up looking like a hero. I reckon about the only. Just eavesdropped a bit there, but I reckon about the only safe bet. As Jamie Wincup comes in. Yeah. So this is. Four tires, boys. This is. I just wanted to know what tire numbers. Thank you. So it's a short stop for them. Winner bottoms followed him. I was about to say the only fair bet, I reckon, is that however this all cleanses out, it's a pretty sure fire bet that we're going to end up with Wing Cup, Winner Bottom, and Courtney pretty close to each other. Whether they're at the race lead or a little bit further back, these championship contenders will be dicing with each other at the end of this race. They need Courtney to keep hustling there at the moment. Yep. So they need him to just keep on hustling. He's going to arrive. There he is. So there's James Courtney. And there's Winkop. So, and Winner Bottom's coming in as well. Cold tires. Get out and merge. Watch the cars. Four cold tires. Thank you. So at the end of all of that, safety cars, timing dramas, the works. Courtney pops out in front. So as it stands right now, James Courtney against Jamie Winkup. The difference is 74 points, provisional. Remember, that's how it stands right now. That'll change 
if Courtney has to come in again. That'll change Safety if the positions start to change on the track. That'll be redundant in about two minutes. So it's all going to change. It's going to keep on changing. Yeah, well, James, James is going to get to about lap 51 on this fuel load. Jamie Wincup. It depends on the impact of the safety car here as we go for the restart. Jamie's going to get to about 57 or 60. Remember that Courtney's got a little track advantage over him at the moment, but he'll lose some of that because the longer he runs out to 51 to the bottom of this fuel load, the greater time he has to stand still to bring the fuel back up to the top, which will put he and Jamie back almost trading punches again. Subject to all this, all this stuff. Oh, Wing Cup has been the master of the restarts today and he's done it again. He's rounded up Alex Davison in a flash and gone by him. And now his next target is James Courtney. Yeah, so can I just say again that it's one stop remaining for the three championship contenders, but they are at different, they're in different phases with how long they'll have to remain stationary to grab their fuel to get them home. But one stop for Courtney, one stop for Wing Cup, one stop for Winterbottom. Courtney will stand still for longer. But it's really, really tight, and all these little sums evolve constantly. You know, it's not impossible that we don't get weather yet, by the way. For another safety car. On the inside, Greg Murphy. Good pass. Good job. Great job. And he was just on the radio in the break talking about poor brake retardation and uh, bad stability in the car, but looked pretty good then, didn't it? He made it work very well. So Murphy goes up to eight. Jason Bright's holding down that top 10 position after starting from pit lane. Very good restart, Jamie Winkup. He was straight away onto Alex Davison. And up into turn two was a really good pass. We've seen a couple of his passing manoeuvres there today. Now Craig Lowndes put some pressure on Davison. Right behind him is Mark Winterbottom, then Russell Ingle, then Jason Bright, and then Greg Murphy, who we saw past Fabian Coulthard just a couple of minutes ago. The other fellow that uh, you've got to factor into all this, but he's not in the championship, but he's in the motor race, is Lee Holtzworth. Now, isn't this fantastic? You've got Courtney leading by 1.3 seconds over Wind Cup. So, despite the complications, despite the ups and downs of them dealing with traffic and a wild race, here they are at the top. And if Winterbottom wants to put any pressure on these guys, he's going to have to get around Craig Lowndes. So Wing Cup's got a bit of cover back in the field. Oh, and I just uh, openly speculated only two or three minutes ago that it's, it's got darker outside. And I said, don't discount weather. And you said, don't discount safety cars. Often they're locked together. But that <laughs> is a, a rain shower over Parramatta. And uh, water on the lens on the chopper there. So if that happens, Stand back. I mean, <laughs> good luck trying to unravel it. <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty lively stuff mid pack. So let's have a look at lap speed. This is important. 130.0 for James. 130.1 for Jamie Whitcup. Alex Davison, defensive line down the inside into turn one with Lowndes going the long way. Winterbottom has a look on the inside. I reckon he rubbed there. Bit of contact. With Lowndes. Bright and Ingle are having a juicy battle further back. And Mark probably didn't need to do that because he would have got up the inside at the next corner because Craig was doing the crisscross. And if Mark followed him, he had a chance to get Alex Davison also. So. The little bump that he gave Lowndes has basically positioned them in those two spots. Race control, bad sportsmanship flag for Alex Davison for blocking in the Irwin Tools entry car four. They'll show him that at the start finish line next time round. So uh, Alex has permitted one move to cover, but he's not allowed to make a secondary move to block off any passing opportunity. Interesting little battle for at this one at the end of the season that we've been looking at Jason Bright coming down in the trading post entry. That sponsorship is going elsewhere. Russell Ingalls' seat is secured. Greg Murphy's on the move. Will Davison's on the move. Oh. Games are plenty on the Zinger replay. Two young Two guns mates. going right at it. Uh. And this is Van Gisbergen and it's Slade, and Slade gets the wall. Well, wide of the race line on the dirty stuff. There's no way he's going to be able to get the thing to do what he needs to do. Now, remember, Mark's... Mark Scaife's remarks earlier in the telecast about the three litres a lap. 
75 litre tank effectively and so you're going to get 25 laps out of it. We've got a 1.5 second margin near enough between Courtney and Wincup. How was their last lap? 29.86 to a 29.87. <laughs> Remarkable pressure between them, isn't it? It's very intense. One hundredth of a second. Slade in pit lane after that contact with the wall at turn five. See the nasty marks against the fence down there. Very fast section of road, one of the best corners on the track. There's Lowndes now bottled up behind Alex Davison. Mark Winterbottom right in behind him. This is turn eight. So they're saying it to James right now. It, it tallies with our calculations. Scott Sinclair saying there's 11 laps in this stint for you now. That gets into lap 51. So again, just to reiterate that, lap 51 for Courtney to come in. Between 57 and 60, depending on safety cars, etc. for Jamie Wincombe. Wincombe will be able to effectively stop for less time. So this will be a benefit to wink up as we get into the middle of this race. And uh, this gets even more complex, more of a nail biter, more at stake. Look at this. That's what we saw. We were looking on board in the break and uh, Winterbottom barely pulled it up down at turn two, three, four as they stand the wets by the Dunlop Groove wet weather tire. Jason Bright's come into the pit. Courtney, there's the margin, and it's uh, a 131.1 for Courtney, so immediately the times have drifted. 130.7 for Wind Cup, 1.69 seconds, first to second. And remember, for the championship, the two lead guys in the series are the two pioneers. They're out by themselves. They're the first cars to arrive in slippery uh, slippery conditions. Now, the other thing we've been talking this, about... Look at this, that's wet. Yeah, it is. It's bad out there on a slick tyre oh. in those conditions. Look at this. Oh, Courtney nearly clobbers the tyres. Don't forget that Wind Cup on his strategy can come in earlier. He's got flexibility. Corgan doesn't have flexibility at the moment. He's going to get to about lap 51, and he's got to get to 51 to fill it up to get it home. It's I, pouring. It's absolutely pouring now. By that, mentioning pioneers, these guys are the men most likely to hit the wall first. That's what you're saying. There's no dry line for these guys. Do you think uh, we get very close? They've all got to get to 51 to get the fuel on to get home. But you, but you can't live out there like that. That's what they're fighting at the moment. They're crunching numbers in the garage, just going. They want them to try and stay out there. This is what I'm getting at. So what they're going to try and ask the drivers to do is get them into the next fuel window. And that's hard. Well, it's OK on that end of the track. At the track end, Dawn Fraser Avenue, we just saw it. It's only sprinkling in this bit. But down at the other end of the track, at the bottom of Australia Avenue, down to Olympic Boulevard, it is soaked. And what makes it even harder for the engineers is that if there is genuine wet out there and the pace comes off, Scapey, it changes the fuel window. So we're saying you've got to get to 51. Okay, here's my top. I have traffic in front of you. Just be careful through that wet sector. They're saying that, uh, you know, to get enough fuel on to get you home to lap 75, you need to come in from 51. But if you end up in a situation with a wet enough track, that might come back to 50 or even 49, and we're on lap 45. So they're going to do everything they can to encourage these guys in particular who've got most at risk. If I was back in the field, I'd come in and play the game. These guys have to stay out there. But these guys are going to have to tough it out. Oh, no, Courtney, big understeer. Wink up made massive ground then. Look, the only thing that they can take comfort in is that they're both in the same boat. One and two in the championship. In exactly the same predicament. It's pouring out there. How wild is that through turn five? Oh, big understeer then for Winker, almost straight in the fence. Look at Mark Duncan, Roland Dane. This, you will never see this sort of stuff. This is the slipperiest part. And eight was Have hard enough. Turn eight was hard enough. Now, the rain clearly at that end of the track is now a genuine problem. And uh, it reaches a point where, forget about the fuel okay. numbers, the car might not be driving. Eye, keeping an eye on it. So the drivers are howling, but they're saying we're keeping whoa, whoa, whoa. an eye on it. We're keeping an eye on it, all right. Number one priority for James Courtney and Jamie Winker. We've got a few more laps for fuel, mate, for fuel. Is to bring the car home at the end of the day. They cannot afford 
effort to put it into the wall and end their day without any points. It's a classic problem here. The drivers just want to be on the most secure tyre. The engineers need the cars to get into the fuel window to fill them up with the fuel that gets them home. So it's a conflict. This end of the track you can deal with, but Mark Dutton's saying cautious through that area, but the area's got bigger, <laughs> because it's now... It's, it's, it's nearly 3.4 kilometres. Well, it's, it's basically from the end of this straight, right around to Dawn Fraser Avenue on at Turn 9. So Turn 2 to Turn 9 is wet. There's Winkup. Oh, he had a look. He had a look. That could have been diabolical. But I reckon that's probably just a mind game, a little tail flick, another little tail flick. I reckon Wing Cup's trying to play mind games here with James Courtney. This is the dangerous spot. Have a look at this. He's just going as hard as he oh. can. They're both going as hard as they can. Look at that. A little touch of the throttle in fourth gear and just bursts into wheel spin. Now oh, oh, oh. oh, my God. I thought that was straight in the fence. That's two laps in a row. There's residual heat in the slick tyres, but with every passing lap, that heat's disappearing. Oh, understeer at eight. Understeer, understeer. He gets it through. But it's a seesaw battle. And both cars will phase differently. They'll both have trends and capabilities in them that vary a bit with the, with the amount of wet. And here comes Wind Cup again at Turn 9. This is a fight. An absolute arm wrestle for the 2010 V8 Supercar Championship. Well, this could well and truly decide it. Who wants it most? Courtney's doing an amazing job to hold off the pressure. He's the first guy out there, the first guy to arrive at all those slippery spots on the circuit. He leads the race. And check this out, that last lap was a minute and 42. The fastest lap is a minute 29. That shows you the difference. How much risk are you prepared to take? And that's the question inside both these helmets at the moment as they approach turn two. They've both had their moments down here in this complex. And where do you take the risk? Look at it. All of a sudden here, it's slippery. It looks ugly. They can see it. They can feel it. It's an ice skating rink around there. One and a half tons of V8 supercar muscle trying to stay on this track. Now Wind Cup comes up alongside him and he rounds up the series leader. What a move. No one has passed there ever. No one has made a pass at turn five. He got up the inside of Courtney. And Lowndes on the radio meanwhile has told his guys that he reckons it's too dry for wets, that it'll hurt the wets on too much of the track. Doesn't look at all. Oh, he's hit the wall. Courtney no, no, actually no, no, hit no, the no, wall. Page relative to everyone else is really good. So head down. We'll keep an eye on it. That was Scott Sinclair. Courtney hit the wall. Oh, oh no! He's gone! Wind Cup's gone down the road at turn nine! We said it before, when you're the first car, you're the pioneer. Before he was able to gauge the, the conditions from Courtney. No stress, it's all good, it's all good. Get back into the rhythm, get back into the rhythm. No stress. Cool heads need to prevail here. And this guy may well be the biggest winner out of all of it. Not Lowndes, but Mark Winterbottom. He's kept his nose clean. He's in fourth position. And the way things are going, James Courtney and Jamie Wincup are in big danger of not making it to the end of this race. What about that? In the course of one lap, Courtney gets rounded up at a spot you've never seen before, right here. Wincup, bang, thank you very much. Not too long after, James Courtney hits the wall. Mark Dutton can't believe what he's seeing. And then not too long after that, Wincup ends up off the road. This is Courtney hitting the wall. Bang. Whack. It was a big one. He just got the tyre bundle. Now, down we go again. Turn nine. Turn nine and Wing Cup goes off the road. Courtney gets the race lead back. Can you just imagine writing that script to happen within about three minutes of racing? And he recovered well. Wing Cup recovered very well from that considering what could have been. And there he is in the background. The battle's alive. It's 2.3 seconds between Courtney and Wind Cup. They're coming up to the moment where the fuel window may open on this slower racetrack to get them in, to get the fuel, to get them home. But there's a lot, there's a fuel load.
to complete this race. There's a whole race segment to come with dodgy weather, with the championship contenders absolutely locked in combat, and right behind them, the pretenders to the crowd, and there's the chief amongst them, Mark Winterbottom. So, to Matt's point, if anybody makes a blue up the queue, it'll change the order. Well, Mark Winterbottom's already done it. He's got past Craig Lowndes. So over that last lap, Winterbottom's made his move on Lowndes. That does a couple of things. It brings Winterbottom back up into the championship picture and it releases a bit of cover that Jamie Wincup had in between him and Winterbottom. He had his teammate there to protect him, not now. Now there's a subplot, because there always is. It can't be Murphy, Ingle and Bright, looking at their numbers at the moment, are very strong in these conditions and they're coming like a train. There's one of them. There's Greg Murphy. And you can see Russell a couple of spots back. Murphy, Ingle and Bright, great pace in these conditions. And they're all going to continue to try and hang on. But, you know, the next problem they've got is it'll flip around. They'll get in the fuel window, but the question for tyres will remain. Because you'll say, well, what do you... And the call will be backwards and forwards between driver and engineer. What do you want? What do you want? What do you want? Well, flip a coin. Look at this. Painted lines, different surfaces, incredibly slippery conditions. <laughs> it's I've, just unbelievable. I reckon I know the answer to what do you want from the driver. Grip, please. <laughs> Whatever you put on it, just make it grippy. <laughs> How about I send you some cold, dry weather tyres for the last segment of the race and you've got to warm them up on a wet track. So as we look at this fantastic slow-mo replay of the front left, absolutely on fire and smoke. They don't steer when that one's stopped. They do not steer when that one's not rotating. The fronts are not rotating. The question is, do you leave your warm, dry tyres on? I do. Neil says yes, yes. Mark says yes. And as we glare at our engineers in the box here who are trying to sell us cold, <laughs> slick tyres, we say no. But it would be interesting to see who wins it out there on the pit lane. Gee, that's funny, isn't it? Driver versus engineer. <laughs> well, Alex Davison just come in. So did, so did Garth Panda, and they both put tyres on just then. They put, both put a fresh set of tyres. So there's Dumbrell. Craig Lowndes was just tracking down. This is Rick Kelly. And they're all putting four tyres on, so they're obviously confident that it's going to stay dry now. Well, if it dries right out, it's a great call. But if it doesn't dry out, it's, you're going to spend the first five laps frightening yourself. Here we go, the front of the field. This is first and second, turn six and seven. More rain, still, still more rain. That's a big clue. That's a big clue on what you do with tyre management. We're coming up to the phase now where Courtney is going to be out of fuel. There's more flexibility in the Vodafone car because of their different strategy. Here comes Wincup once again. He'll have a look down the inside at nine. It brought him undone about 10 or 15 minutes ago. He decides this time I might just play it cool. He figures the dry line's a better line than the off-the-road line that caught him out last time. So cool heads. So very close to the end of the fuel load for James Courtney. And doesn't that say a lot that Mark Dutton telling Jamie Wincup that Courtney's going to be coming in? More often than not, they just concentrate on their own plans, their own drivers. Okay, steady on the mark, mate. Steady on the mark. Let's watch what they do with tyres. That's what I want to know. No, they're going to go fresh and cold. First lap or two will be exciting. Good luck. Escape, he's holding his breath. Clear to go, clear to go, clear to go. So they're waiting for the fuel, there it is, done. And off he goes on cold tyres. Okay, no, you need to be real careful here. We've got four cold tyres <laughs> on, four cold tyres. Real careful, all right. The traffic. <laughs> Only those that are driven on cold Neil, tyres it, it, in the it'll be interesting. Home. Neil, just have a look at the outlap of Craig Lowndes versus this one of Courtney, because Lowndes did leave hot front tyres on and only put, it, put cold rears on. Exactly, yeah. like uh, That's what we were talking about. And, and you're dead right, because on this, this segment of the track, you go straight out, the cold tyres have got no grip, no tyre temperature, and you've got to go up to then the wet section that starts from the next corner. Turn two, right through to turn ten is wet. And another curiosity here is I wonder what the cold starting pressures were for this incoming tyre set. They might have snuck them up a little bit, but if it dries out, they'll overpressure. So even less time than normal to get temperatures into the tyres. It's got a quite decent groove there. There is actually a couple of solid wheel tracks there now. And the drivers have got a better view of all of this than we do. That's the one I don't like. It and it's still raining. Look at it. You can actually see it there. Here we go. Another tricky release here. This is Rick Kelly, Paul Dumbrell, and contact. 
and that will result in a penalty for Rick Kelly. So Courtney having to tippy toe his way around. He's done well. It's been a very good outlap based on that tyre condition. Four super slippery cold tyres. Out you go in a 3.4 kilometres of a dogfight. Seriously, Scafie and I just buckled up like pocket knives then. Oh, he, uh, he just barely pulled it up. He just barely pulled it up. Missed the other piece oh, by a full car wind and didn't hit the fence. Look, look. Oh, again, that's two corners in a row. This is the championship leader on cold tyres, only just staying on the track when there's fences everywhere to hit. And I'm pretty sure he's been hit by more rain on this first outlap than he did on the inlap. Yeah, sure. It was a two minute 20 for Courtney, but uh, which it takes into account the stationary time and Rick Kelly, as I predicted earlier, copying the uh, unsafe release penalty for Jack Daniels racing. So two minutes 20, keep that figure in your head. So Winkup leads the race by six seconds from Mark Winterbottom. And Winterbottom's actually quicker than him at the moment to the second sector by quite a margin, nearly a second. Russell Ingle is in third position. Then Jason Bright, Shane Van Gisbergen. Keep your eyes on James Courtney. And listen to the tippy toe. Just hear the short shift. You know, just not using all the grunt, the torque, the revs. Pulling the gears early. He's fueled to the end. Ah, oh, understeer. That's what all the big weight was. Pull the gear early. That was so close to understeering straight into that fuso fence at turn eight. Look at this. This is where he couldn't pull up last lap. And you and I ducked under the desk, but he got away with it. like it's working very well on his car either. Look how spasmodic it is. It's a single sweep wiper on a V8 supercar with a with a high power. Well, that's what we that's what we just saw. We were on board when that car almost went into the fuso fence. So they're encouraging James to flash his lights so the traffic can see him. Look at this, it's still wet down there. This is Wind Cup. He's the race leader. It's the wheel spin. That's fourth gear, fifth gear. Still wheel spinning. Novotel off to the right. Here's the big roller coaster into turn nine. And it's very wet down there at turn eight. Using a bit of curve. Oh, look at this. Oh, which of the two Valvoline Fujitsu cars is it? Well, the number will reveal, and it's Holdsworth. So hard to pull these cars up in these con Oh, dear. And there's very little lock available. Steering lock, that is. OK, mate, bring it in. This is right. This is right. I want to know how he ended up. Yeah, he guy rated it off, off the back of turn seven. So watch this. Sideways. Right, so he turned around. It. Yep. I thought he was reversing to get out of a, a, an off-road. Oh, here we go. Here we go. This is the critical stop. What do they do for tyres? They're slicks. Did they say rears yep, only? Rear only for Jamie Wincup. It's different. Tyre fuel stop. Different strategy. They're just going to get enough fuel in it to get it home. Keeping the warm fronts on, cold rears. That's a better bet for me. Pit lane, got nothing, mate. Put you back on this charge here, right? Eh? Fighting on fuel, still nothing. Court go. Courtney is coming up to the he's, final turn. He's going to be ahead of him because he only had to do, well, he had to stand still for less time because of the fuel, and he only had to do two, not four tyres. He's in front of him. So still waiting for Courtney. Here he comes with the lights on. So that's the relative gain for Jamie Wincup to get out there in front. But remember, Wincup now has two cold tyres on the rear of car number one. It won't be as disastrous or tippy toe as a lap that James Courtney had to do first time out. He's got a bit of traffic in front of him. Oh. Jamie Wincup in the form of Jonathan Webb. And there's the rain coming down. And it's not impossible that it gets wet enough that they don't have to come oh, back again for wets. Ingle in. And, uh, and this stuck. is the stuff I'm talking about. If it gets really bad, this will be a safety car. This is turn eight. Ingle we... was on a charge too. He was on track to be close to a podium. Look at him trying to find reverse. Race control ready to activate the safety car. 
If he can't get out of there and he won't get out of there. They'll give him a bit of time in case he can grab reverse, but he was having a bit of trouble then. It's heavily wedged. It's wedged right in under those tyres. Yeah, and he's got no grip. Anyway. Got to him out there, mate. There's a curb and a gutter. So this is on board now with Engel, who was having a great run. Got wide, never looked like turning, and straight in. Oh. There's, a, there's a gutter under that. So it hasn't actually done probably too much structural damage to the front of the car when he climbed up there. That's winner bottom. In and out, gone, serviced. Todd Kelly the same. Uh, the point I was going to make about uh, just as Russell had his moment at turn eight is that if it gets really wet, they'll all have to come back for wet. Exactly. Now, the other thing here is that don't discount that Winterbottom will end up in front of Courtney and all this. I reckon he is, because he's gone, hasn't he? We yep. saw him departing, and that was James, I think, coming onto the straight. So he's actually, and you know, that's bad news for James in points land if Jamie holds the lead of this motor race. Well, that's a, a really unfortunate ending to this race for Russell Ingle. Started inside the top 10. He was really on a charge. I mean, we have been focusing for good reason on the championship fight, but guys like him and Greg Murphy have been up there and they were pushing along well. It's been five years since the Enforcers had a race win. So uh, the Pedder's safety car on standby, looking out the window here, scramble. away she goes. Looking out the window. The safety car is on track. I reckon it's going to get wetter. Jamie Winkup. Mark oh, uh, that was James Courtney Porter. almost into the fence. Under the control of the safety, safety car. car now, if it gets wetter, Stephen Johnson will be a threat here. He's on wets. Look at this. this Look this how slippery Murphy. it is. Oh, Greg. And whack. And now, that, that's how Lee Holdsworth spun. And Greg subsequently came to the pits. <laughs> oh. Hello. It's a Hello, party. Tim. There's heap, heaps of people joining that spot. And it's Greg Murphy brought his wounded car back into pit lane. Look how wet it is. Tell us if the track gets too wet, mate. You tell us if the track gets too wet. Putting oil on the track as well. So the championship points scored now reads 32 points is the difference between Courtney and Wind Cup. Winner bottom, 194 points back. But the worst thing that can happen now, Matt, is when you go slow on your slick tyre, you've got no temperature. So. So in a normal racing circumstance, we saw half the track dry. You keep the temperature up and the grip's OK. But behind the safety car, they've got no grip. Safety car not in yet. And of course, then when you go fast, you've got no grip. No grip. Well, the, yeah, they, they cool out. And uh, as a result of that, they lose surface temperature. They also lose pressure. You're going to keep raining, Dotto, because it's wet weather now. He's saying he wants wet, if it's going to keep raining. There's the $64 million question. And now they've got a serious nail biter in their hands, because oh. they do not want to give away track Three. position. We're not sure, mate. We're not sure. We're ready. We're ready. So go around. Go around. Oh, oh look at that. Look at that. So Mark Dutton's been forced to play weather forecaster. You know what the I... best he could do was not sure. Restart. Off we go. You know what I'd do? If I were them, I'd do it, because Courtney will mirror them, and then it'll be a wet weather race between both of them, because I don't reckon James would tough it out. It's too wet. So our three championship contenders, pouring up, up winner bottom and Courtney, make up the top three of this race. It is belting down. They're not on wet tyres. The question that I would ask in either of the bunkers at Vodafone, change for the lead for Jim Beam, is can we afford a crash? And the answer to that is no. no. Yeah. So look at this. They, they end up in the wall. It's game over. It's going to be game over for one of these contenders if they're not careful. They've got to get on wet tyres now. Look at this. That is so slippery, you would not believe it. If you're down the order, Scapey, you'd play the risk game. But I wouldn't play the risk game. Oh, James Courtney's about to Oh, no! He's in the fence! The man's in the fence! They're all in the fence! Oh, unbelievable! Top three in the fence. Bit Van Wiesberg and goes as well. Suddenly, Wincup has managed to keep going. That's Courtney's going. desperately trying careful. to go with him. That's bad! That's stupid. Oh, I, said it, I said it 15 seconds ago, they pushed that you cannot afford to have a crash in these conditions. They should have been on wets. Oh, oh. He's got nothing it's on the broken. right front. It's broken. Right it's broken. It's going nowhere. They're all broken. Forget about it. Uh, this is just yeah, incredible. The right front appears to have damage. It could be just flat. Let's have a good look. Let's just take our time. Have a ball wet. Got damage on front right. 
This yeah. could end up being a red flag, which means that if it's red flags, it could backdate. I need to see where we're at in percentage terms. <laughs> but we are ready for it's got broken front suspension. Guys, this is when you've got to go with the driver. You've got to go with the driver's feel. When he said on the safety car at the restart, it's time for Wentz. We have we have passed the critical 75%. It can be declared a race. Uh, we've got massively wounded cars. And if it is declared, it'll backdate. To the don't prior. Yeah, don't ask me what it looked like at that point because it's too much data in the process. He's going to battle to get it into pit lane. He can't steer it. No, he's got it there now. Oh, now, I totally echo your remarks. The driver, need, he was saying, I need wet. They're playing way too much of a theoretical right, laptop game Just and not enough racetrack game. Look at that. That's what... And we're going to uh, take a time and just make sure this thing's good. So that's what happened to Craig Lowndes' car as he went slamming into the rear of James Courtney's car. Okay. Right out of it. Okay, let's go. Up. Stand under, please. Let's have it oh, off. it's got a broken disc. Okay. It's got a broken Cold rotor. Ricky. He's going to be no, there forever. No, we've got a rotor that's smashed in pieces, boys. Rotor smashed in pieces. Upright broken in half. Upright broken in half. Yeah, you can see there goes not only smashed this, but the upright is broken clean in half. That's going nowhere. So that's one championship contender gone for the day. Now, what's it look like at the other end of town? Because it doesn't look much prettier. Yeah, on the, it's gone too. Line. He's You're going on. nowhere. Adrian Burgess, sporting director. This thing is broken. These two he's guys are going to get a big fat zero. James Courtney, to make matters worse, he's turned into the wrong garage. They're going to have to push him around and get him in the right garage. This is a mess. It is belting down in pit lane at the moment. It couldn't get any worse. Guys, where is Winterbottom? Because if these blokes score zeros, Winterbottom you're going to have to focus on here because he could grab points. He's down in 13th. What's the state of his car? Have a look at the damage on Lowndes' car after running into the back of James Courtney at turn five. Well, if they thought Jamie Winkup's car was bad, wait until they see what's happened to Lowndes. Alex Davison stuck. Todd Kelly was stuck there. It's like a wrecking yard. Mark Winterbottom is the big question. Where is he? What damage has he got? He was the first one to go. The Watts linkage has gone on that as well. The rear oh, it's it. is it's wobbling all over the shop. not much that isn't gone on it. Uh, so Winterbottom, here he is. No, okay, oh. so he's got a big fat zero too. So all three contenders <laughs> are going to end up with nothing out of this. This is a joke. Yes, yeah, so I needed to see him to understand what could, because this could have been the Formula One scenario where the bloke in third, third. In the championship yep. leaps up and scares everybody at the top end of town. Uh, That's not going to happen. Stay outside there. Loud and Courtney are out at the moment. We're going to try to do something with this. Let's see what we can do. Stay in the car. There's 14 laps to go. Well, when uh, they no. pull this off, you watch. Our, if they get it off. No. I'm, I'm going to be interested in whether this gets declared. And if it does, when the declaration happens, if it happens, it could have impact on the result and the championship because of who was leading second, third, and so on at the time. But the longer it trickles on... Well, I'm pretty sure that Jamie Wincup was leading the race. When we go back... It may not get declared. Depends on how many cars are scattered So this where. is what happens. So Wincup follows these guys in. Winterbottom's the first to go. Courtney goes in. Wincup's gone in. There they are. Championship contenders. Then they crunch again. Van Gisbergen gets into the mix. Now you keep an eye on Craig Lowndes, who gets speared over to the left-hand side. There's still cars hitting, hitting the fence left, right and centre. Oh. And then... There's Michael oh. Caruso. Todd Kelly will arrive on the pitcher sooner or later because he couldn't go anywhere. And then watch this. Oh, that's from Jamie Wincup. There's Courtney. This is a championship moment evaporating in the middle well, of a rainstorm. But it's the status quo. So in the, it, it, it's a reset for tomorrow. So forget about the championship contenders. They've actually all neutralised each other. Each of the teams and their strategists have neutralised each check, other. Check this out. Watch James Courtney's car and Craig Lowndes. Oh, that sound you can hear is the sound of cash registers ringing. Because that's an expensive act, all that. So I'd forgotten about Winterbottom because I was that focused on these two guys that it was hard to read what was going on. But uh, but the first bloke to crash was Winterbottom. Yes, he was the guy that went into the fence first. Guys, it's all happening here. James Cordy, that's the last thing you needed. Yeah, it wasn't real good, Barrett. It, uh, you know, it's just massive backward playing down that back straight. It's, uh, yeah, it's pretty dangerous. So it's, uh, yeah.
I don't know what happened with the other guys, so we'll see what happens. Mate, I have no idea how you keep your cool. <laughs> yeah, I was, yeah, it's done now, mate, so uh, no point going crazy about it. We'll just see what happens. All right, all the best. Just see if I can dive in here and just grab a quick word. Hey, Jamie, um, pretty spectacular stuff there, mate. Cha ch championship changing stuff. Just talk us through what was going, because from a driving point of view, I mean, we've driven cars, we know how hard it is. Engineers saying stay out, mate, hard call. Yeah, hard call. I'm pissed off now. I didn't, uh, didn't come in for wear, so I was so close to pulling in before the safety car, but that's the way it goes, mate. We all, uh, hey, I was, I was completely equiplaning about 100 metres for the corner. We're all just absolutely out of control, hanging on, and uh, just brace for the impact. And that's what it was, mate. So there was obviously a lot of water flowing across that left hander there, and it literally did lift the car and straight ahead. Yeah, the three of us were full aquaplane, 100 metres for the quarter, and we were just hanging on. Crazy stuff, but if we can get this thing back out there, we can get some points. Good on you, mate. Well done. And I reckon if we could have a chat to Mark Winterbottom, he would say exactly the same thing. Those three guys were in exactly the same position at the same time and the same outcome. Aquaplaning into the fence, major damage, almost well, replica jam damage across the three cars. The interesting thing there, and we took, you guys were talking about this, was remember on that restart lap, when Jamie Winkup asked Mark Dutton the question, he didn't say, I want to come in. He asked him the question, is it going to keep raining? Well, it's a pretty open-ended question. Well, that, he, but he made a clear statement, we need to be on wets. And we were saying it up here. But the problem, that they were all waiting for one of the others to blink. Everybody was waiting and looking at the other guy because they didn't want to give away track position. Meantime, the guys couldn't steer the cars. You know, eventually on a slick tyre, a cold slick tyre, like look at these conditions, there's look nothing at this. That's novel stuff. Smash up Derby. May as well come down that way. He's going to end up in another it's car. He's going to run into the other car. Gee. May as well not. What's all that about? <laughs> it's not as though he could do any more damage. Well, he'd already wiped the, the right hand rear mirror off, <laughs> off, so he couldn't see where that one was. <laughs> Croppo. That was a car park it's mistake. <laughs> those, those mirrors are useless. So. <laughs> They're trying to check out what damage is unfolding in car five. Mark Winterbottom, it's Matty White here. If, if you've got me and you know anything that, uh, that we don't, what can you inform us about the damage to your car? Um, yeah, she's not turning. Um, yeah, I don't know. It was a big hit, mate. I'm surprised I even got back. So, um, yeah, that one hurt a little. I, uh, I backed off. I went through the chicane. I backed off. I still couldn't get through there at rolling speed. So, um, yeah, that was a big one. That hurt a little bit, that one. It was a bizarre situation, Mark, to see the top three championship contenders all go into the wall at exactly the same spot, aquaplaning. So you've all got a, a similar story of what? Yeah, yeah. Um, what a bugger. I saw them go in. I thought that was my chance. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's the way it goes, mate. It's um, been a long race, and then uh, the heavens open up. You're on the slick tyre, and... That just shows how greasy it is. You know, people probably don't understand how slippery it is, but um, yeah, I was at walking pace almost going in there and it just took off. So uh, yeah, that, that's, that's just how it goes, mate. Pretty heavy impact. We're just looking at the replay right now. Not only when you hit the wall, you must have known what was coming behind you too. Yeah, I saw about uh, 15 cars ping-ponging off each other. So um, yeah, what do you do? It was um, entertaining anyway. <laughs> Well, good on you, Mark. Let's see if he can get back out there. Doesn't this make you want to have a comeback, Scafi? This is awesome, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Frosty. It's pretty safe in the commentary box, Frosty. Uh, so, look, the focus here is really on the work being done to all three cars and whether they can get them out and get them classified and steal a couple of points. Meantime, Jonathan Webb is the race leader from Jason Bright and Stephen Johnson. And, it's, and the motor race continues. So all that stuff I was on about before was declaration. They're under the control of the safety car and it's just rolling on. So even if they did declare it now, it would be declared around the, these new scenarios, not the one that we were and talking about that's earlier. That's right, Jonathan Webb would be the winner. And, and, but Steve Johnson is on wets. So, boys, I can tell you, look, they're working really hard on Jamie's car. They've obviously cottoned. If they can get this upright on the car, they're out there. I'll just grab Roland Day and team principal. Roland, um... A little bit going on there, mate. Uh, how do you think you'll go here? I mean, we'll, it's a big job what they're doing. I can see they're upright, some front suspension. What do you think? Oh, they'll give it a red hot go and see if we can get out to, to... We've done enough laps in terms of being classified as a finisher. 
So a little bit of a race between them and us at the moment to see who gets out. But uh, we can get out before the uh, before the chequered flag comes down. We'll get some more points. Mate, that was a tough, tough call. I mean, we've all been there, slick tyres on a wet track. You know, I mean, in hindsight, we're all probably thinking, you wish we were on wet tyres a lap earlier. Very hard call, a lot of debate. What do you think? Yeah, Jamie actually uh, said something on the uh, on the lap before uh, before it went green, and uh, it really was. I was thinking, yeah, this is real touch and go. So uh, it's easy to be a, a, a smart ass afterwards, but uh, yeah, we should have called it earlier. Okay. Anyway, mate, well done. Now the interesting thing is that uh, as they sit in there, and as Roland pointed out, that there's a there's a battle on for who can fix a destroyed car fastest. Uh, you actually look at them on the timing and the computer at the moment even though they're in the pit lane they're both showing wind cup position 14 courtney position 15 so as it's been in recent months they still remain locked together yeah and uh, they want to get them back out there so they can get them classified and try and grab some points any points and a lot of damage on they've all got similar levels of damage it's all in the same area well they they all hit the same all fence at the same speed <laughs> So just to reiterate, it's uh, the mother car of Jonathan Webb having a great rookie season in the main game, who's leading the field. And then Jason Bright, who's had great pace uh, all weekend, except for that little flaw in qualifying where he plucked an oil line off. And then Stephen Johnson. And what we're trying to determine now is who is on a wet tyre versus who's on a dry tyre. There's an incredible battle of mechanical skill going on here between FPR and Jim Beam Racing at the moment. The Jim Beam guys are throwing everyone at Courtney's car at the moment. There's not a spare pair of hands in the garage. They are under the car. They're on top of the car. And meantime, James Courtney has his leg just poking out, just, just doing all he can at the moment. And that's relaxing and getting ready to go again. But they are working feverishly to try and get this car back out. And you take a peek across to FPR. It's a similar scene there. They've still got Mark Witterbottom's car in pit lane at the moment. And they are working feverishly as well, but this is full pressure on. Adrian Burgess, who's the uh, the team principal, is hands on deck as well. They're just bashing the bonnet at the moment, just trying to get this thing back into shape so they can shut it up and get back on the racetrack. And even Adrian, the team boss, is there holding onto the bonnet as they pound it. It is all happening down here at Jim Beam Racing, guys. Extraordinary pitches. Well, it's such a team game. You've just had mistakes made on the track. And now it's a team race to get the cars back to going again. They've all got to put right-hand front corners in these cars to team race to get them back out and to get some points, to salvage a couple of points. Another victim uh, departs the scene, Will Davison. Yeah, and as all the debris is cleaned up, eventually the race director will release the race once again. Now three championship contenders are all in pit lane, all battered and bruised. Jason Bargwan is going fighting down to turn one. This has fallen in the lap of these guys, courtesy of a major incident involving our championship contenders, Wing Cup, Courtney and Winterbottom. And don't discount the possibility that there could be another safety car intervention in what's obviously really tough conditions. And I, I, I'm not 100% sure of who's on what tyre at the moment either. And looking at these cars, must, they must be on wets. There's a couple that don't look like they are. Well, these blokes do. Yeah. Well, this either the way, spot, this is the spot. Either way, so gents, they're, they're not going to make the 74 lap race distance. There's probably about four laps to go. Jason Bright there in third. There's Stephen Johnson. Paul Tumbrell. I mean, just five or ten minutes ago, these guys were battling mid pack. Now they're going for a race win. Jason Bargwana oh. has always big, big slide coming out of turn eight for Jason Bargwana. He's always been good in the wet. Yes. Yeah, but on our computer, he's showing one lap down at the moment in position uh, nine, Jason Bargwana. So he's potentially trying to unlap himself. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's why he's going so hard, so fast, so early in this restart. So the guys on the lead lap, Webb, Bright, Johnson, Rick Kelly, Coulthard, Lee Holdsworth, who started from pole, and Andrew Thompson. But, but Webb's actually got a substantial lead over Bright, who yeah. is second. He's got three seconds on him at the moment. That's the motor race. Meantime, back at the Jim Beam garage. And, Scopey, uh, earlier we were talking 
uh, it looked like these fellows at Ford Performance Racing didn't have their car in the garage, which limits the number of people that can work on it. But at DJR, as in Jim Beam Racing and at Team Vodafone, they did have them in the garage. That's right. So there's a regulation of how many guys can work on the car in the lane. FPR have chosen to leave the car in the pit lane, while the other two teams could basically have as many guys as they like. As Mark Renner reported with Jim Beam Racing, they had every everyone in the place working on James Courtney's car. So different strategies again in pit lane. And if one of those cars get out in the course of the next couple of laps, if Wind Cup, Winterbottom or Courtney get out, They'll finish 15th, they'll get 60 points. Yeah, that's right, so it's absolutely worth the fight. I mean, you wouldn't, you wouldn't worry about how ugly it is. Oh, just get it out Just there. get it out, doesn't matter about the geometry, so long as all four wheels are on it and it basically resembles a motor car, you'd send it. But the problem is, when you put a right in front corner in them, you've got to make sure they stop. You've got to make sure they've got at least got brakes. You saw all the brake damage on, on the three cars at the front. So you've certainly, when you go back out on the road, you've got to be safe about it. I think there's also a time requirement you've got to achieve. You can't, there's a rule somewhere that it'll take me too long to find that you can't, look at the front of that thing. It's just about ready to push out. Well, they're getting closer and closer, aren't they? You can't do a lap time, Scapey, that is effectively a, a, a turtle time. You've actually got to go out and do something that's a, re we might get onto that and see if we can get the answer for you. Body language tells us that Winterbottom will not be going anywhere. If anything, the race to get back out there is being won by Dick Johnson racing at the moment. But they're running out of time because this race will finish in a matter of laps. As is Jamie Winkup, Matty. There's five guys under the car, including Mark Dutton with blood all over his fingers. These guys are giving it their all. The upright's just gone on. They're about two bolts away, mate. And, uh, Brad Jones has just sent me a text. The reason why Bright's struggling is he's got... They, they've, just, they've decided to start that car with way too lower tyre pressures. They're just not coming up. So that's the reason why Webb's all over him at the moment, leading. Here we are, in and out of both the key garages. There's a cutoff time for this race, and it ends in two minutes. Nice update from Jim Beam. They're just about to get the right front uh, tyre on James Courtney's car. The last thing they've got to check is when they drop it down that there's enough clearance between the track and the fuel uh, the fuel tank at the back. That's the big issue at the moment. Wouldn't be worrying about anything like that, Barretti. You'd just be getting it. Getting four wheels on the thing and pushing it down pit lane, getting it out there. Now, what about this? Yeah. 26 years of age, Jonathan Webb. He won the Fujitsu series. He comes in here into the main game. Now, now, oh, they can't get it started. No, no, it's running, but they're just having another look at it to make sure it's running okay. And V8 supercar officials are there just watching. So your point, Matt, Jonathan Webb staring down the gun barrel here of the potential first ever championship win. Courtney oh. back out. He's going to get out on this racetrack. The thing is a mess at the front. He's just got to be able to get around. And Adrian Burgess just said, be careful, James, be careful. So this has got... It's got nothing to do. And that's what he's saying. It's got nothing to do with winning the race, but they've won the most important race, the race to get Courtney back on the track. And Courtney's won that race against Winterbottom and Wind Cup. I hasten, to add, I hasten to add that Courtney's got to be super, super careful because he could end up back in the wall again with stone cold tyres and geometry all over the place. Well, he'll just be going trundling around. And Jonathan Webb, well, he's got a different scenario altogether. Remember, we go back to Sandown when Paul Dunbrell won his first race after 242 cracks at it. Well, Jonathan Webb is in just his 33rd main game race. And if he can hold it together and keep it straight, he's going to find himself on the race winner's list. Now, in James Courtney's uh, broken car case, if his lap time is more than twice the fastest lap of the winner's fastest lap time, then he's not classified. Did I say that right? We so if, if Courtney's time is twice, is more than twice as yep. slow, I should say, as this bloke's fastest lap, which will be based on his dry right. time, yeah, then have he's not classified. You'll have one more lap to go. Bottom line is, James just can't go out and trundle around at 4Ks an hour. He's got to push along. But let's focus on Jonathan Webb. So that means that James has got to do a three minute lap. Look at the front of it. It's got negative camber on one side, positive on the other. It's covered in race tape. It's destroyed. Bright is coming, but will it be fast enough? 
bright. He's closing now that he's got some temperature up. Webb started in 21st. Remember, this car is out of the Dick Johnson Racing Stable. Yeah, at a moment. So they've had it all thrown at them, DJR, this weekend. But Bright is certainly coming. Youth versus experience in the rain, on the streets, as a championship battle has unfolded around them in the most extraordinary fashion. Jonathan Webb has less than three kilometres now to deliver a race win. He's on. He'll take. Think and of Jason Bright's has got some pace now that it's gripped up and he's on a big attack. There's three quarters of a lap remaining and I'll tell you what, he might get here. The last uh, three or four corners are going to be game on here. Meantime, at the other end of the racetrack, Courtney's trying to get a lap time out of that broken car in order to be classified and get a vital pile of points, which for 15 is 60 points. And there goes Wincup, just exiting the pit lane. No wheel alignment, wheel on, gone. Horrible. So they've just got him out there. So Courtney and Win Cup have gone out there. And 16th, if Win Cup is classified, is worth 57 points. Look at this. Look at Bright. He's coming at him. Jason Bright has won 15 races in his career. The last was four years ago. Jonathan Webb's career is really only just starting. He's never won a V8 supercar race. It's been a battle of attrition. They've had to fight off the rain. Webb's car was crunched in qualifying. And here he is, this 26-year-old with a cool head. The emotion will be bubbling over as he brings it around the final couple of turns. The rain is falling down at the Sydney Telstra 500 and that is a victory that's fallen from the heavens for Jonathan Webb. Fantastic job. Good on him. Good Great on him. drive. Good work, well boy. done. Not bad strategy there, Jeff. Glad you've been working on it. And that makes Webb the 60th driver to win a race in the history of Australian Touring Car Championship and V8 Supercar Racing. And now here's Courtney. He's done two thirds of this lap. To the second intermediate, he's recorded a 1 minute 28.3. It will be under three minutes. And look, at this. look who's there. His partner in crime. Well, walking wounded. These two. That just wheel is almost off. off that car. They're just locked together, aren't they? He'll, he'll be lucky to complete this lap. Look at the front right wheel. It's barely holding on. Oh, this is just amazing. You're going to have to okay, burn up the calculators up. to find out what's happening in the championship. But I'll tell you what's happening. It's going to Sunday. Courtney did it 203. But Win Cup hasn't recorded a lap. I'm not sure that Win Cup will get classified. We'll check that for you. He hasn't done a lap. He hasn't done a flying lap. So even though Matty is showing 16th, I'm not sure that he'll be classified. But Courtney has done a lap. It's a two minute and three. And congratulations to these two guys, to Jonathan Webb and to Jason Bright, because they are left standing where others couldn't get the job done. James Courtney, Neil Crompton. Unbelievable day, mate. You've been classified as 15th, which is worth 60 points to you. Your thoughts? Yeah, look, guys, it was uh, it was pretty chaotic. Just as we come down there, everyone just started aquaplaning. So it, uh, you know, everyone was passengers, but my guys did an amazing, amazing job. And congrats to Webby. He's, uh, you know, he's done a great job this year. Obviously, James, it was uh, incredibly treacherous there. Uh, you know, were you flinching and considering getting on to wets early, or uh, do you think you still made the right call, you guys? Uh, oh, look, when we come over the line that time, the last time we went through there, it wasn't as wet as what it was when we arrived there. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's a tough call, and I reckon we made the right one at the time. But, uh, you know, hindsight, we probably should have stopped and put the wets on then. But, uh, you know, that's the way it is. Well, well done, mate. Uh, at least you've been classified according to our numbers, and uh, we'll look forward to tomorrow. So I've been crunching some numbers. Yes. If James Courtney, he finishes uh, with 60 points out of today, and if Jamie Winkup is not classified, James will have a 113-point lead going into the final race. Jamie Winkup, you got me? Yeah, go, Matty. How are you? Oh, I'm feeling pretty good. How are you travelling? Uh, hey, disappointed, mate. It's, it's tough, really tough conditions out here, and 
I, uh, I, was, I was having an argument with myself. One half was telling me to pit, the other was saying keep going. I wish I had a pit now. Yeah, Jamie, we were saying the same thing, Neil and I. It's one of those ones where you've got to go with your intuition sometimes, don't you? And uh, I heard you say on the radio to Mark Dutton, we really should be in. So it's one of those ones, I mean, all three of you had no grip there at turn five. It was an incredible incident, wasn't it? Oh, unbelievable, Scofie. It's one of those ones where we hit, we aqua planed about 100 metres for the corner and literally, mate, just hanging on. There was nothing we could do. But anyway, it's a bit of a battle in the pits there. Unfortunately, we come second, but uh, we're still in it for tomorrow. Mate, well done. Great drive. It was a really good drive in the drive. It was fantastic. Thanks, mate. Well, it's game on for tomorrow. We need to check with the officials to see who was classified and who wasn't. But Jonathan Webb, at the end of all of this, has scored a victory in car 19 in the Falcon out of Dick Johnson Racing. Bright and Rick Kelly make up the podium.